With this tutorial, I will show you a couple of ways how you can utilize the morph feature to make this type of zooming into your slides and into the elements that you've either designed or you have on your slide. A really simple and beautiful transition between elements, so it's worth watching and learning. I will show you this on an example JPEG file and on an example designed slide in PowerPoint. For all this to work, you will need at least PowerPoint 2019 or the Microsoft 365 subscription, which gives you the newest version because we need the morph transition. If you do happen to have a slide like that and you'd like to zoom into the portions of the slide, there is a very simple way of doing so. You will take the slide and you will duplicate the slide with the existing item on it. I'm just zooming out of the slide and I'm resizing this element to take a larger portion of my screen because I want to focus on number one. Then again, I click on this slide, duplicate, and I need to move it so it focuses on number two. You will repeat the steps for each item you want to zoom in. For example, if on the next slide, I'm Control D again, you want to zoom into the five, you will just place that into the middle of the screen. All right, do not make this any longer. If you want to end the sequence, what I usually do, I take the very first slide where we have like everything, I press Ctrl C, I go to the very last portion of the section and I press Ctrl V to like start and finish with the same type of slide. You can see on the left side how does this look. I'm just selecting the last slide, shift, pressing the first slide so every of those five slides are selected and I'm clicking morph. There is nothing more to it. If you go to the first slide right now and I press F5, we will have the first original slide. Now, as I click to the next slide, it will automatically zoom, I mean morph into this section of the image. Then we had number two, as I press the next slide, the next slide was number five, as you can see here, and the next slide was returning to the basic option. How cool is that? You can zoom into portions of, the, of your slide and then come back to the original image. The most important thing here is that we have the same object on all of those slides. On all of those slides, we had this particular picture. This is why the morph function work here perfectly. Now let's go to example number two. Let's say that you have designed a slide, a slide in PowerPoint like that. And my little problem here is that I've animated this slide. I've animated this slide because uh, this was basically a ready slide uh, to use like that. But if we want to use the morph feature, this might cause some problems. So for that reason, I'll take the slide, I go to animations, I open the animation pane, and I just remove the existing animations. Right now, I can again, because I know that I want to focus on step number two, one, two, three, four on each consecutive slide. So I'm taking my original slide here on the left side, Control D, I need all the elements to remain here. So I'm selecting all the elements, I move them away of the screen, but I want to keep them. And I will just enlarge this step number one. It will be a bit tedious and difficult to select everything. I'll press my shortcut control and right bracket key to enlarge the text. I'm not going into details right now to, to move the text and to resize it. It doesn't really matter. I just want to show you the morphing technique. Okay, this would be step number one. I'll take this slide and I press control D with all the same existing elements on the slide but this time I'll move this towards the top side, I'll move this step one away, and I move step number two here. Okay, I'll press my shift key to make this equal. All right, and this is how you would go about morphing in a slide like that. Um, the text seems to be on a dark color, no problem. I'll just put it here. I should make the text bigger as well, but this doesn't matter. And once I'm ready, since I'm using all the same elements here, I can hover back again to the original slide. Let me take the original slide, Ctrl C, and putting it as the last one, Ctrl V as the last one of this sequence. What is important here? All the elements you see here, they are still available on the previous slide. They are outside of the screen, but they are still somewhere available. If they will not be available, Morph will have to simply fade those items in, and this wouldn't look so attractive. If you want to use the morph transition, you want to keep all the elements on the previous slide because they will nicely flow into the slide. All right, enough talking. I'll select again this, the last slide. 
I press my control key, pick, 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 and morph transition. All right, how would this look? I had my PowerPoint slide prepared. I removed all animations and I'm sorry, it is advancing automatically. That's sometimes a problem with PowerPoint. I want to select the slides again. I want to go to transitions and I want to select on mouse click because I won't be in full control over the, the proceeding of the slides. I remove after. Okay, now PowerPoint will patiently wait until I click my mouse or my keyboard. I want to go to step number one. I would explain something to you and step number one would be the most important right now. As follows, of course, step number two would be next and it beautifully morphs from outside of the screen because the step number two was under the screen. Right now, we will go back to the original slide. Everything will come back. Everything will become smaller again and come from outside the screen. Beautiful. I will just show you an example. If, if, on slam, if this wouldn't be available here, if I delete this, the morph function wouldn't know where to take this from. So it would be simply faded in. This doesn't look as attractive. Look at those icons. Those icons just fade in. So it's a bit boring. But if I press Ctrl Z to bring them back into PowerPoint, it looks much, much nicer because everything is like coming together from different parts of, of the screen. And I have a little bonus example here with a screenshot. If you are like insecure of what you're doing and you have some troubles with animating different elements in PowerPoint, a little workaround would be playing a slide, uh, pressing print screen and just control V this screenshot into PowerPoint. Having this screenshot here, I can control C this screenshot, I can select new slides and I can simply enlarge the screenshot. Yes, you will use, lose quality and it wouldn't be as professional as we did here, but you know what? It's not as bad. We, we can move this image, like it's a bit difficult. I always have to like resize so I see the slide behind it. Uh, now step number four maybe. And now again, duplicating the last slide. Here, in the last bonus example, I'm using a screenshot. This is simply a screenshot. And I will again enlarge to this slide. Then we will move out. And then we go back to the original slide. A couple of examples, how you can use the more feature. I know this is difficult, but I just want to show you the potential. Sorry for making this tutorial long. I was just excited and wanted to show you everything here. I'm ending it right now. Thank you for listening. Hope you've learned something and see you in other tutorials like this.